The hovel stood in neat, endless rows, each a patchwork of peeling paint, sagging roofs, and rusted doors. To an outsider, they might have looked abandoned, but inside, each was a life tethered to the promise of ownership, eventually. The workers had signed the mortgage contracts with trembling hands, lured by the words, a home of your own. The ink barely dried before the debt began to swell. The king's democratic government owned the land, the materials, and his coin of the bank that loaned them the money. Every brick, every nail came with interest compounded daily, while wages barely covered the payments. To own a home is to own your future, the overseer had said on signing day, his polished smile as hollow as the promises. But what future was this? Each day began before dawn, the workers trudging to the factory in silence, shoulders bowed as if the debt itself rode them like a weight. The machines roared, the air thick with soot and sweat, and the hours bled into each other. Every month they gathered in the office to pay their dues. The clerk sat behind a fortress of paperwork, flipping through ledgers that held their lives in numbers. You're behind this month, he'd say to someone. Just another loan, then. It was always another loan. A new piece of paper to sign, another thread in the web tightening around them. The hovels weren't homes, they were cages with the illusion of a door. The more they worked, the further the debt seemed to grow, as if the walls themselves consumed their wages faster than they could earn them. Some dreamed of escape, of walking away from the factory, the debt, the promise. But where would they go? The land beyond the rose was barren, and the king's democratic government owned everything for miles. Leave, the overseer would say, and you lose everything you've worked for. So they stayed, they labored, they paid. Not for the hovels themselves, but for the idea of something better, even as the years passed and the dream crumbled like the walls of their houses. And when they could no longer work, bent backs, arthritic hands, lungs blackened from factory air, the king's democratic government came for what was left. The hovels returned to the ledger, ready to be sold to the next dreamer, the next prisoner, in an unbroken cycle of labor and loss.